So what is the future of Scourge as a League mechanic in Path of Exile? Well, if we're talking the immediate future, I don't expect that Scourge will be going core in 317. And I'll get into some of the reasons why I think that later in the video. The TLDR is, it doesn't feel finished, and it doesn't feel like it's in a good spot to become a core mechanic. It also probably needs to wait until other core mechanics are removed, because it's clearly designed as a replacement for one, but more about that in a little bit. I'm also going to spend some time talking about how Scourge functions. First, how it functions in maps, the shift mechanic, some of the side effects of that, and the ups and downs. Next, I'm going to talk about Scourge maps themselves, something that I don't necessarily think has to be tied directly to Scourge in the future. We could see, for example, that Scourge does not ever go core as a mapping mechanic, but Scourge maps randomly drop, or vice versa. And finally, the item crangling system, where it worked, where it didn't work, and why I think a lot of people hate it, and give it an undeserved bad reputation. I'll also be speculating on some of the changes that might take place as Scourge goes core. From the start, Scourge felt like a mechanic that was unfinished or, at best, partially finished. There were some of the longest lasting bugs I've seen since Synthesis League, and many of these weren't patched until around a month in. It certainly soured the experience for a lot of people who felt punished by the bugs, or, of course, people who missed their chance to abuse things that were, quite honestly, broken and printed money. Scourge, on the other hand, was also one of the most rewarding leagues we've had in a long time. Scourge maps print hundreds of currency items, scarabs, exalts, multiple simulacrums, and more. Especially if you abuse prophecies, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. This means that Scourge was a popular mechanic for people who like loot, but not necessarily a good one. If you liked these discussions of the mechanics of Path of Exile and why things are the way they are, along with build showcases and economic or crafting guides, be sure to sub to the channel, leave a like on the video, and let me know about your experiences with Scourge down in the comments below. On the other hand, if you like and play other games, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I talk about all sorts of different games, like how terrible it is that companies are forcing NFTs into absolutely everything where they don't belong. So, first of all, how does Scourge function within maps? And what can we learn from the way that Scourge functions that we can use to inform how it might go core in the future? Also as a note, for the sake of simplicity, from here on out, I'm just going to be calling items that are Scourged, including maps, as Crangled. And because the community has adopted the word, it's a lot easier to say Crangled rather than Scourged for whatever reason. I'm going to be using it for the rest of this video. So how does Scourge function in maps, and what are some of the problems that we ran into, especially early in the league? Scourge is a league button that causes you to shift into what is essentially a second map embedded within your map. And here's where the problems start. When you shift into the Krangleverse, you fight new enemies. As you kill the enemies, you gain stacks of corruption, which cause those enemies to have more item quantity and deal more damage with hits and ailments. So this puts you in a win more situation. You want to shift as much as possible. You want to get as many stacks as possible. Scourge will multiplicatively scale with your magic find, so magic finding is far more popular this league than it's been since the Bestiary days. This has also led to a lot of people feeling like Scourged enemies are too dangerous. They'll shift and they'll just instantly die. There's no point in building defenses because the enemies hit so hard they completely negate them. You might as well just go glass cannon and use cast on death portal and have your six layers of defense. For some builds, especially magic find builds, this honestly is very true. But of course, because defense has got a major overhaul, it's pretty easy to have the defenses needed to survive Scourge mobs. At least, now. This is after certain Scourged enemies had their damage reduced by 60%. When the League first went live, it was quite frankly impossible to survive, especially on early League gear, which led to a lot of frustrations as people felt they were being punished for trying the League mechanic, and they just didn't do it very much. You'd get to maybe 50-60 stacks, back off around 80, and stop completely around 150. So, one thing that probably does have to change going forwards is the more damage. The problem with this is, if it's not changed, it's going to become very rippy very quickly for anyone who doesn't have the current league's level of defenses, so GG can't nerf defenses. My concern here is that this becomes design limiting. I would much rather see something like Scourge Monsters deal more damage per 5 or per 10 stacks. They get a little bit scarier, there's still some reason to not just blindly go up to stack 300. But let's be honest, players are going to go up to stack 300 anyway. If you give someone a big red button that says, 
ruin your game experience, the average PoE player is absolutely going to press it. So another solution could be to cap the stacks around 200, which means the monsters won't get quite as dangerous. Another issue that came up with the shift mechanic is sometimes you'd shift and you'd instantly die. I couldn't find it with a quick Google search, but there is a clip of Noogie experiencing this exact thing. And this happens because the enemies weren't being stunned on shift. This does need to be addressed if it's going to be a core mechanic, especially if it's a core mechanic that exists in hardcore. You can't have enemies just delete you because they weren't stunned when they should have been. The most likely culprit is the map mod, enemies cannot be stunned, so the stun either needs to completely bypass that, or something else needs to happen, such as giving you grace period when you shift. With those concerns aside, I do think Scourge is a really cool mechanic. It gives you new ways to interact with your map, where you're essentially clearing it twice, you're kind of encouraged to backtrack, but at the same time, you feel like you're rewarded for doing so, and the timer isn't all that punishing, because it's not like you get nothing for your time if you don't min-max every second of it. It still doesn't necessarily mean you should sit there looting the whole time, but the loot comes out with you, so that's not really a big deal. As a mechanic that appears in your maps, I'd say Scourge is pretty good. The part that confused me was, why more quantity of items? Isn't GGG trying to reduce the amount of loot in PoE? Well, the more I thought about it, the more I realized the solution's probably related to something that was talked about at ExileCon which is that Beyond was Red Bandits, and they didn't really like that. They wanted to replace Beyond with another more meaningful mechanic. Delirium was envisioned as the original replacement for Beyond. Of course, the problem with all this is, players don't see Red Bandits. They see currency piles when they see Beyond. This is due to the Nemesis Sextant, something which, for all we know, won't exist by PoE 2. It does, however, mean that anything that replaces Beyond needs to be profitable. And what's more profitable than being able to use Magic Find gear and have it be multiplicatively scaled? So my theory is, Scourge has been engineered as a replacement for Beyond. The reason it's so rewarding is it needs to be. And for anyone who wants to zoom around making as much currency as possible, Magic Find is going to be the way to do it, and Scourge is going to help with that. Now, if they abandon the idea of item quantity and instead go to item luck, that's going to be really interesting, especially with how Scourge currently scales. It might mean that you'll still drop relatively few items, but you'll drop really, really good stuff far more consistently. This is also why the Scourge enemies don't really scale defensively. One thing that made Delirium very difficult for Magic Find builds was that monsters got so damn tanky. If you're investing in item quantity, you're not investing in damage. You're not investing in defenses. You couldn't survive hits from those enemies, and you also couldn't kill them. People got around this by, of course, abusing Headhunter. However, that's also not super healthy. So I do like the Scourge solution in that regard. The enemies get more dangerous, they will still kill you, but they don't get harder to kill, so even if you're a relatively low damage magic find build, you can deal with it. There is one other long-term concern when it comes to Scourge in maps, though, and that is it currently works counterintuitively to everything else in Path of Exile. Normally, the more you juice your map, the more rewarding it is. And this is where Scourge completely falls apart. Right now, there's a lot of things that you would traditionally do to juice your map, such as adding Alva, or maybe even adding an Ambush Scarab to put a bunch of strong boxes in the map. And these things delete a bunch of a map's native monsters in a radius around them, and convert them over into a mechanic. If you want an extreme example of this, Monstrous Treasure deletes all the native monsters, and replaces them with a bunch of strong boxes. When it comes to Scourge, this is problematic because this deletion affects the Krangleverse as well. I completely understand that GGG does not want to run into another situation like Beyond or like Delirium, where the League mechanic exponentially scales everything else within the map. More density equals more Scourge equals more density. This is a bad cycle because it's never-ending and it's going to lead to a bunch of power creep, nerfs, and all sorts of things players don't like. Making Scourge generally unscalable is a positive thing. However, making it unscalable and then making things that normally scale your map remove parts of it is really bad. I don't think this was intended, and I expect to see it fixed if Scourge ever does go core, because otherwise people are going to feel punished for investing into Scourge. People are going to feel like they're pigeonholed into this one hyper-specific playstyle. You can't put a bunch of effects on your map because those will make the Scourge worse. And that's just not how PoE is designed to be played. It's always designed so that the more you invest, the more you're rewarded. So those are some of my thoughts on the pros and cons of how Scourge currently functions in maps, what its future use might be, and some issues that need to be resolved along the way. 
Now, what about Scourge maps themselves? This is by far the most rewarding content we've ever seen in Path of Exile. If you compare the raw currency per hour that could come out of something like a 100% Delirious map, and then you compare it to a top tier Scourge map, well, the Scourge map wins by a lot. The only thing that even comes close was splitting blueprints back in Heist League, and that was so rewarding it broke the game. If all Scourge gave you was currency, I'm sure it would have broken the game just as much. However, this time it was split up among a bunch of different things. It was split up between expedition currency, scarabs, gems, and so much more, which helped in some ways dilute it. Though, even in that regard, it did damage a lot of other League content. For example, expedition, you got so many rerolls from Scourge that you could never farm enough currency to actually use them all. You had to sell them, and that's just weird. Scourge maps were especially abusable, because the rares were probably intended to be fixed, this map would have 14 rares and that's it. Except for the fact that they scaled with modifiers to rare monsters. Things like Nemesis, more rare monsters. A Watchstone with more rare monsters. The Twins Prophecy, or even the Rebirth Prophecy. One of the best ways to get a massive amount of value out of a juicy Scourge map was to bring a bunch of friends with you and have them all spam the Rebirth Prophecy. Each time it was spammed, it would bring back to life one rare enemy. If that rare enemy was a Scourged Rare that you killed in the Krangleverse, then it would drop all of its loot all over again. Just to demonstrate, I've done a little bit of Rebirth spam in this map, and I added 7 total rares to the map. That's just me. If you multiply that by 6 players, and if you say each one drops 7 Scarabs, well, just by myself, that's 7 times 7, or 49 Scarabs. Multiply 49 times 6, and you get 294. You've added 294 scarabs to the map just using the Rebirth Prophecy. Of course, part of the reason I'm bringing this up is it's not going to be an issue in the future. Prophecies are being removed in 317. Alright, one thing fixed. The Scourge maps are still going to be incredibly rewarding, which means they're going to be far, far rarer in the future. I don't think you'll be able to just sit there, put Scourge on every map with a map device, and crangle maps within every Scourge. More likely, they're going to be a rare drop or something similar to that, much like we have right now with synth maps. Synth maps are also relatively rewarding, but not nearly so much as the level of Scourged maps. And if anyone was wondering, how did I earn a Mage Blood in 25 hours? Well, that's how. I spammed Scourge maps. I farmed over 5,000 stacked decks, thousands of scarabs, and so many other things. I sold it all, and I had a Mage Blood. The obscene level of rewards aside, and the relatively common level of loot aside, there's one last problem with Scourge maps in their current incarnation, and this is the one that I suspect GGG will target. That is, there's no difference between a Tier 1 Scourge map and a Tier 19 Scourge map. The reward tiles, minus those tied to specific item level, don't actually care. You don't get Gilded Scarabs only in red maps. You get Gilded Scarabs in white maps. You don't only get higher tier Expedition currencies in red maps. You get them in every map and the amount of rewards per rare don't scale either. So if Scourge maps are kept around as something that you can crangle yourself, I expect there to be more of a risk reward here. It shouldn't be that a white map is equally rewarding to a tier 19 map, because that takes away the incentive to ever do the tier 19 version. So instead, I would expect either one of two things. One, maps can only be crangled a certain number of times based on their tier. A tier 5 map, maybe you can only crangle it three times, whereas at tier 16 you could crangle all the way up to 10. Alternatively, let's say the maps just drop, you can't crangle anymore. Maybe the rewards would be much lesser on white maps than on red maps. And I suspect that the game's general level-based restrictions are going to be applied. Things like fragments, things like scarabs, all sorts of currency items are going to be restricted more based on the level of the content you do it in. I.e. you will get better drops in a tier 16 scourge map in the future than you do in a tier 1. This is how the game works, this is what incentivizes players to push and improve, and so it makes sense for that change to happen. Finally, the part of a video that I suspect is going to be rather unpopular. And I think it's going to be rather unpopular because a lot of people had negative subjective experiences with Krangling, and they're not going to want to separate that from the largely positive objective value that it adds to the game. So what I mean by that is, People crangled items and they said, oh, it sucks. I'm not going to crangle this anymore. I'm not going to crangle anything. And it's true that you could have bad subjective experiences with crangling items. But look at the price of an uncorrupted cold iron point. 
Look at the price of an uncorrupted Sedimas. Look at the price of a bunch of uniques that normally wouldn't be worth more than a couple of chaos. The uncorrupted versions are actually worth a lot of money now. And this is a good thing for the economy. The softcore trade economy in particular has always suffered from a problem where as the league goes on, items pile up and pile up and pile up and there's no way to get rid of them. Crangling offers an outlet. Even if you don't crangle things personally, there's a very good chance someone else will. Just check how many items for, say, Cold Iron Point are corrupted versus uncorrupted. The less people who are willing to crangle items, the wealthier the people who are willing to crangle them will get. And similarly, the more people who are willing to crangle items, the higher the value of the uncorrupted version. What this means is, if you're a player who doesn't want to do any risk, you could actually make more money selling your Sedimas for someone else to corrupt and crangle than you could by doing it yourself. And that's totally okay. Corrupting and crangling is supposed to be risky. If you do it once, you can easily fail at it. You could easily brick the item and, well, that's the end of it. But if you do it a hundred or a thousand times, you will be rewarded for that. You'll be rewarded because the odds aren't that terrible of getting a good reward. It just feels that way for a lot of people because a lot of people got attached to their item. To use an analogy that's been brought up a lot, people feel like you get more reward from double corrupting something than you do from crangling it. If you look at the actual math behind it for a lot of items, and this will vary, you have much better odds of getting something that's still usable after crangling an item than you do after double corrupting it. If you double corrupt it, there's a 50% chance the item will no longer exist, just straight up gone. Except in most cases, the odds that the item is ruined beyond repair or beyond use when crangling is more like 30%, sometimes even as low as 16%, though this will vary from item to item. The problem is the double corrupting is instant. You click a button and the item either exists or doesn't. With crangling, you crangle it once and you think, oh, well, it sucked, but it was only my first crangle. That's fine. It was really easy to do. And so you take it up to tier two and you get, let's just say, plus res, minus res. You get minus fire plus lightning. Well, okay, the item's not really any worse off than you started. It's just not better. And so you say, oh, well, I kind of put a lot of time and effort into this. I'll crangle it one more time. And you get really invested in the idea that that third crangle is going to be amazing. And you get plus lightning res minus cold res. The item isn't terrible. It isn't ruined. Someone's still going to have a use for it. In fact, for some people, it might even be improved because they're so overloaded on res on a different piece of gear. But you feel like the item was a horrible waste of your time. You spent dozens of maps expecting a better outcome than you got. So what GGG could do to improve this is gate the access to crangling things behind something else and have the effects be instant. For example, maybe you kill a boss and it drops a crangling orb and you can apply three crangling orbs to the item. That way the item's corrupted three times, it still goes through the same stages, but it's over almost instantly and you don't have that expectation. The other problem is of course chasing perfection. People will see that perfect double corrupted shavs and they'll go, oh man, that could be me. Not realizing there's a less than 1% chance when you double corrupt a given shavs that you will get that outcome. So then they look at a crangled item and they go, oh, it's definitely going to hit explodey. I'm definitely going to hit a keystone on this chest. This is the first one I'm crangling, but it has to win because I've seen all these GFL clips and oh, wait, it didn't? Oh, well, that sucks. I, I forgot. Streamers have all the luck. I'm just not lucky. I'm just not going to crangle anything anymore. This sucks. This doesn't apply to me. But what if it didn't hit something amazing? What if it hit something mediocre? Let's say it hit plus chaos res minus life and it's on shafts. Well, that's still good. Minus life probably won't mess with your auras to the point where the item's ruined. And plus chaos res is helpful for capping your chaos res. You've still improved the shafts and you've taken an uncorrupted shafts out of a market. So I fully understand why crangling felt bad, but I made over a hundred exalts crangling items. I especially focused on shields because that was often what I needed for my builds. I did several other things though, including rings, helmets, and much more. I was able to consistently profit by crangling dozens if not hundreds of items. I didn't get very many super high roll outcomes. I didn't get very many, oh my god, this is the perfect thing ever. But I got dozens of usable items. Very rarely was a crangle outcome so bad that I just vendored the item afterwards. There were some. I got an Aegis Aurora that was lose yes on block. That's trash. I got a Brass Dome with reduced global defenses. That's also trash. 
there are things that will absolutely destroy the value of an item entirely. On the other hand, I got a red blade banner with reduced local defenses, a completely irrelevant downside. And all res plus strength is the upsides. And that item's amazing. There's none like it last I saw because I used a corrupted base with reduced damage taken from crits. I was able to make that because I took the risk. So on one hand, I'm not advocating that you take your best item and you crangle it. I'm not saying you should expect amazing results every time. I am saying crangling provides a lot of value because it takes items out of the economy. It creates a market for items that would normally be 1 to 2 to 5c, that don't have that much value on their own, and they can be made amazing. Something like an Atziri Step, not worth all that much. Atziri Step with movement speed and no major downside, worth a lot. And the list goes on. So, if crangling was a process that was made far more immediate, you didn't have that major time investment, you weren't sitting there thinking, I hope this is good, I hope this is good, it has to be good. You didn't get as emotionally invested in the item. I do expect that it could be far more popular in future leagues, and it provides a beneficial service. All that said, there's one last thing to address, and that is tainted currencies. What do I think will happen with them? Well, I don't think there's going to be that much that happens with some of them. I don't expect something like a Divine Teardrop to stay within the game. It's very good for super high-end crafting, and it's very good for things like abusing the fact that certain influence modifiers only have one tier to force perfect items. If you're a regular player, it's not very useful at all, so I don't really think it has a good place in the game. Usually, GGG's bar for removing something is when the edge cases and the abuse cases are the main usage rather than everyone getting a benefit. On the other hand, I could easily see Tainted Mythic Orbs sticking around, people love their gambling, and people are going to gamble with them, so why not? Which brings us to things like Tainted Fusings and Tainted Jewelers and Tainted Chromes. I don't know where I stand on this one, because I don't know if GGG's plan is to make Six Links super super common and available, or to make them rare, and to make Six Socketed Gems in PoE 2 a scarcity. If a goal is to make things a scarcity in PoE 2, I don't think these will stick around. On the other hand, it's been something that a lot of people have enjoyed, and at the current stage of development, I'm not sure Path of Exile really benefits from scarcity in Six Links. That feels unnecessarily punishing to me, so I could easily see these sticking around, either as core Scourge drops or honestly even just core game drops in general. Who knows, maybe Val side areas will have them in the future. As for most of the rest of the currencies, I don't know that people have a super strong opinion about them either way. Tainted Exalts are by far the most interesting, they're a high-end crafting item that doesn't just cater to the abuse cases, but the uses are so niche that most people probably won't even know if they're gone. So what are your thoughts on the future of Scourge League? Do you expect it to go core in 3.17? Do you expect it to go core at all? I'm sure in a couple weeks there's going to be a GGG announcement talking about this and addressing some of their concerns, some of their plans for the future. Until then, all we have is speculation. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on Scourge League. And finally, just a small reminder, just because you personally, subjectively, had bad experiences with crangling items, doesn't mean that objectively the value is terrible. You could do the math for yourself, more of a time than not, you don't make the item worse than it was before, and if you crangle a lot of items, you will consistently profit over time. And if a lot of people crangle items, the economy is healthier, especially for most items that would be considered low value. Just think about it this way. If you're a player for whom 5 chaos really matters, and you found a pair of 10 quant sedimas, not a super uncommon drop, would you rather sell them for 5 to 7c, or would you rather be able to sell them for 10 to 20 because crangling exists? Keep that in mind as you leave your comments below. Thank you for watching, and again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you, and have a great day.